This podcast is brought to you by The Shift. Hello and welcome back to the Storytime podcast. My name is Claire. I go by Clizair on the internet and this is Storytime with Clizair where I invite on guests to tell me their best stories. We can't be in the pub right now so this is you take your best pub story and you tell it to me. If you want to be on the Storytime podcast or Storytime with Clizair as I'm now calling it, please email storytime at theshift.ie. Give me a quick summary of your story and I will be in touch to organize you coming on the podcast. This podcast is first and foremost brought to you by the patrons on the Storytime Superhero tier on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Clizair. Please click the link down below in the description box or in the show notes on the audio platforms and consider becoming a patron of the show. This podcast is also supported by affiliate links. So this week's affiliate link is Amazon Music. The link is getamazonmusic.com forward slash Clizair again all the links in the description and in the show notes and the audio platforms. Amazon Music Unlimited is a premium music subscription service featuring 70 million songs. With Amazon Music Unlimited, you can listen to any song, anytime, anywhere on all of your devices. You'll never hear or see an ad. And of course, you can download songs for offline play or playlists for offline listening. Amazon Music Unlimited gets to know you, personalizing your recommendations based on your listening habits. And whether you're after the perfect after dinner playlist, all weekend listening or recommendations for the best new indie music, Amazon Music Unlimited has it all. So to get unlimited access to 70 million songs free for 30 days, go to getamazonmusic.com forward slash Clizair. That's getamazonmusic.com forward slash C-L-I-S-A-R-E. Free for 30 days. Cancel any time. Unlimited access to 70 million songs. Thank you, Amazon, for giving me an affiliate link to help support the show. It's story time. Hello and welcome back to the Storytime podcast. And this week I have with me Liam O'Neill. Hello, Liam. Hello, how are you? How are you? I'm very Would you like good. to Thank tell everyone where to board. find you on the internet? <laughs> uh, to find me on the internet, you just look up uh, the Prove It Guy or Limitation is a Mirage. The Prove It Guy is easier to remember. It is definitely. But I put all the links down in the description on YouTube and in the show notes on the audio platform. So people should just be able to scroll down and click and find you. Cool. Thank you. And so you have a really good, interesting story for me today. You actually had a few stories, but the, we've decided to focus on one to start with. Yeah. Uh, so today's story is about when I competed on Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Um, the way that came about is that I live my life um, trying to teach people that you can be more than you are. And a lot of people would question me on that and say, well, prove it. So that's where the prove it guy came from. And one of my students wanted to go on Ninja Warrior, but they were a bit nervous. And I said, look, I'll go with you if you want. I'll apply. It'll be fine. We'll go on just to sort of show that like, it's, there's no big deal. Um, we showed up. Uh, he ended up doing the hour before me and came out and told me how hectic the workout was. And it was um, just a lot of a lot of exercise in a small space of time, which I wasn't really prepared for, even though that's what I spent most of my time doing. But I had sort of just went up to help him out and back him. Um, so when I went in, I thought, what would win the Ninja Warrior team over? Would it be me being super fit like everybody else? Or could I do something mental that they just can't look away from and they want to see again? So we went... You had to go and do a workout and then an interview. So I was lucky that the interview was first. So I was still fresh looking. I wasn't all sweaty and looking like a complete mess. And the camera woman, the gear, there was a girl in front of the camera and she's just, she was holding up her shoulder and she said to me, uh, just say your name. She must have done this about a thousand times. She went, just say your name and your age and where you're from and what you do. Real bored. And I was like, my name is Liam O'Neill. Um, I'm known as the Prove It Guy. I could tell you what I do, but instead I thought I would show you. And I took a plastic chopstick out of my pocket. You know, the one that you would just get in a Chinese restaurant, just an everyday chopstick. And I put it on my throat at the soft bit at the bottom of your throat. And I smashed it with my hand. So it like exploded. And the camera woman went, what, what happened? Can you do that again? And I was like, yeah. She goes, could you do that live? And I was like, this... This is life. This is real life right now. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously she had never seen anything like that before. So she was really taken aback. 
and asked me if I could do it live on just before I ran the course, would I be able to do it? So that's when I knew I was definitely getting in because nobody, she'd never seen anything like that before. Yeah. And so, sorry, just to be clear, what do you mean like by exploded? So you put it into your neck. So you push it into the soft bit at the bottom. Yeah. So if you're listening or watching, just press there. So it makes you feel a wee bit sick. Yeah. But one of the things I had to do when I was doing iron shirt training for Kung Fu was learn how to control your body. So you push it in and then you hit the back of your hand. So it's in there. And then either your throat gives or it gives. Thankfully, it always gives. <laughs> um, so far, anyway. And it smashes. Um, so oh it my- just flew around the room. It hit the camera, it hit the person, it, hit ev- it just went everywhere. Uh, oh my God. So my That's thing what I thought was, it would go through your neck if you did that. So far, not so far. <laughs> thankfully, it's oh uh, a lot of people. The first question people normally ask is, is that sore? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> obviously <laughs> you do that. It's quite sore. So hitting yourself with a chapstick. You always have the funnest bruise of a just a wee circle bruise <laughs> in the center of your throat. Oh, my God. Um, so that that was. That was good. That got me on the show. Unfortunately, my student didn't get on the show, which <laughs> sort of <laughs> was a bit bad, but also showed he was like, yeah, well, I suppose you're you are technically the master, so you're meant to be on. Um, so then about a week before the show, they actually I became one of the VT people. They sent a camera crew over to do magic. So I would do magic. I, I asked them, did they want me to be a magician? a vagabond or um, a corporate speaker trainer. And they said they've never had a magician, so they want a magician on. So I think I'm the first UK um, magician to be on Ninja Warrior. Maybe the only one. I have no idea, actually. Now I'm going to think about it. And sorry, actually, I should ask you this at the start. So is it is it a UK version of the Ninja Warrior or is it the American one? No, it was the UK one. So it gotcha. was filmed in Manchester. And it, where did you audition for it? Was it in the it UK? It was in though? a random CrossFit gym in Belfast. Oh, so they came to they came to the north. Yeah, so they, oh, they, amazing. they came over. There was hundreds of people there. Like they were just every hour they were just filling in about 50, 60 people. And you just had to compete against each other. And like because I knew I get through, I didn't bother trying and the exercise <laughs> stuff. <laughs> just, I didn't, there was no need. It was and I had to drive home and also didn't bother. Like, yeah, it, was it wasn't like, about that. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a bit of running. I don't run and all the training I do. I, I just don't like running. And we went to start running and there was a wee fella beside me and he was like, I'm going to beat you. And I was like, yeah, definitely are. <laughs> and the woman hit the bell and everybody took off running. And she looked at me and she was like, why aren't you running? And I was like, I don't run. It's like, what you needed to get a ninja war? I was like, I don't run. The guy who was going to beat me ran, like this is how hard people were putting in. Like he ran so much and when he, he won, like he did, it was like an extreme bleak test. And then he just threw up in the corner. And I was like, that's why I don't, that's why I don't do it. No good. Like, people were really putting in the effort to get there. Uh, so the, the camera crew came to Belfast. They that was mad. They got they took over, not took over, like, but let us have full reign of the Titanic quarter up in Belfast. So we got into exhibitions and stuff, and I had to perform to different people. This is before I had any idea of, of TV magic and knew nothing about editing. So I did really, if you were there live, like I did really good routines, whereas I should have just did quick, sharp tricks. Uh, like in the, if you actually watch the, the Ninja Warrior I'm on, they edit one of the tricks to make me look like a bit of a fool in it, for want of a better term. They, so during the routine, it's about a book. The girl's thinking of a book and one of the characters in the book's called Leo. So I say to her, if I was on stage, I would say, is your star sign a Leo? If it hits, great. If it doesn't, I go, oh, it probably has something to do with it. And then later on, I reveal when we find the book, we reveal that the main character in the book is called Leo. So that's where I got that from. And then it adds a bit more oomph. But if you edit the magic trick that I say, is your star sign Leo? And the girl says, no. And then you just <laughs> cut it. <laughs> it doesn't look as good. But like that trick ended with, the trick ended with the book. It was a book that she was thinking of from her childhood called Starlight or Starlight Boy or something. And she was shopping. So she had a box of shop, like a bag of shopping with her. The book appeared inside a closed 
milk tray box so that she had just bought when she opened the milk tray and took the tray of chocolates out the book with my name signed on it was there so it was like a really good a lot of effort to do and really good but the bit they used is me saying (laughs) are you a Leo (laughs) or saying no um so they, they came over we did that for the day filmed loads of stuff and they probably used about 30 seconds of it maybe yeah that's typical all right and you learn that after. If I didn't know how it started, I would have just broke chopsticks in front of everybody and like <laughs> let people kick me in the bag and stuff instead of trying to be smart about it. Um, then on the actual day, Ninja Warrior, like they fly you over and they put you up. They put you up and they put me up in the best hotel I've ever been put up in my life. Like it was, can't even remember the name of it, but it was in the center of Manchester and it was just lovely. It had a lovely view. The only weird thing about the hotel was it had like an open bathroom. So you know the way when you go to a hotel, there's a bed and there's always a chair for you to sit on. I don't know what it's for. Like, it's just most people just sit in the bed and put their clothes on the chair. But if you sat on that chair, you could look at the actual toilet. So that was so weird. And there's no way of, like, there was no door or anything. I thought, like, imagine if you were on your first date. Well, not your first date, because that'd be too soon, but like yeah. third date maybe or whatever. Yeah. And you go home to this hotel and you're like, and you use the bath. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Um, then the next morning you had to go, like you had to sign all this paperwork and stuff and people were complaining in the queue. Like there's so much to read, like maybe 10 pages. And I, they said to me, do you want to read it? And I was like, no. Nah. And somebody else complained then, no, I'm going to read it. And I was like, is there anything that could possibly say in this that would make you not do Ninja Warrior? And they were like, no, I'm doing it. And I was like, well, then who cares? It's right, whatever you like. I have no idea what I signed away. So I, just I mean, it, I'd say it basically says if you die, it's not to do with us. It's your own fault. That's what I assumed. I was like, yeah, if I die, Rocky <laughs> four, if I die, I die. I was like, good luck, come away. <laughs> um, I ended up being there for about, like when we were walking there, there was no shops or anything open. So I didn't bring any food with me. And I was on quite a strict diet at that stage. They offered us sandwiches, which I didn't think was a good idea when I haven't had bread in years. I thought, probably not a good idea to start eating sandwiches now. So I hadn't eaten for about eight hours. I think I might have had a banana like earlier in the day, but we were there for about eight hours before you had to go. I ended up doing some mindset work with people in the, because I've worked with a lot of um, like competitors, fighters and things like that for mindset. So I did that with a few people before they went on. Um, one of them actually got through to the final as far as I remember but so on my run the first thing I had to do was break a chopstick on my throat so I had to walk up and you know the way you see everybody they could do like a pose or like a yeah thing. so the whole audience there's an audience man who's like g in the audience up and everyone's going mental there's about 2,000 people there I break a chopstick and the whole place just goes Poof. just silent no way and I'm like oh uh, which obviously they never showed on TV because it looks super dangerous. So they're like, well, we can't actually show that, but can you do it in front of the audience? No way. Uh, so they didn't even show it. Nah, they didn't, they didn't show my, my, they showed the VT. They didn't show the chapstick. And then they showed me starting the. That's so the odd stick. considering like that's why the picture. Yeah. But I think they just wanted something different in front Probably the way I thought it was the girl who was in charge of picking people thought it would be awesome. And then when the legal team saw it, they were like, no. <laughs> That's probably what happened to that. You can't do that. Um, it suck all the fun out of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I've signed a waiver, like if I die, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, whenever you're seeing the course too, which it was weird, like people always ask me, how many times did you get to try all the stuff? You're not even allowed to touch the course. Like, one guy tried to touch the wall. Like you get to walk and you're allowed to ask one question as like a team of people do it. And you're allowed to say like, should I run up this fast? Is this hard? Most people, you're only allowed one question and most people get in before you and they ask stupid questions. Like, was that really difficult? And the, and the guy must be so used to it. He's just like, yeah. Next, and you're like, oh, now we don't know anything about it. Um, like one guy tried to touch the, the wall and they panicked and like went mental. So you weren't actually allowed to touch any of the course you see it from a side view but not straight down the middle either wow um so then whenever i start i break a chopstick and then i i jump the wall the wee thing the stepping stones which everybody falls on and lots of people fell that day so 
in your head, you like prep yourself. This is going to be very slippy. Get ready to catch. It's like landed on glue. <laughs> Land on it. And you're like, how did you? Like my, I'm sitting thinking, how did anyone fall off this? Like it's, it's like worse than a skateboard. Uh, and then I, I move on and there's a bit rolling logs. I think it was like the second or third thing that I did. I only have one person in the audience with me and she was from the north as well. So when I w- started to run towards the logs, the north voice just pierced the crowd. And like, <laughs> and it was just a thing that we always shout. So that distracted me and I fell. Oh, no. But I landed flat. I fell forward and hit everything like a big jangly mess. But it's, it's slightly lower. Where I landed was lower than the audience could see. So it looked like obviously it hit the water. And then I'm lying in my flat and I roll just across like rolling logs and get to the other side and just stand up and do a power pose. And everybody goes mental because it looked like I was, I was completely <laughs> they gone. They thought you were gone. And I do love a power pose. So I got through a power pose in there. Then I, the next bit I had to do was you jumped onto, it was called a UFO. You had to catch it and then it swings you down and it, you're supposed to time everything and jump off it and land on the mat. And they talk, when they talked about it, they talked about it like it took a lot of skill and preparation and timing and like really pay attention. But when it throws you down, it hit the stop so hard that it just threw you off <laughs> and you just landed. <laughs> I just landed on the, I didn't try. I just was like, right, I'll hold up. My brain's thinking of all these intricate ways I'm going to try to achieve this, doing all the math. And all of a sudden I'm just flung through there and I just land on my feet. I'm like, well, that is. Hooray. And then the, the next bit, you had to jump onto a thing that like you only had wee finger grips and it's, oh, you had to swing yeah. it and then jump to a cargo net. And before this, I had tore my scapula. So from doing hypnosis, I, I had wee protocols in that if I do anything stupid, my arm will just stop. It'll not let me do it because it'll re-tear. So you see me do it. I, I jump off the horseshoe looking thing and I catch the cargo net with the arm that's not supposed to catch it. And it just lets go. And I go flying backwards uh, into the water. So that's as far as I got on it. I didn't actually get to finish it. Um, but the most inconvenient bit for me is I don't really wear shoes as, as much as I can get away with wearing shoes. I won't wear shoes. I always train without shoes on. I'm not wearing shoes right now. As in bare feet or you wear like... No, bare feet. As oh. much as I can get away with, I'll be bare feet. Um, Are and you I not freezing? For... I don't wear bare feet because I'm always cold when I do. You can get wee shoes that will get you close to bare feet, but keep your feet warm. I would always suggest them to people that want to be barefoot, but are, are cold all the time. Yeah. Or maybe you could wear like 80s ankle warmers. <laughs> I don't know it myself. I've, I've never tried. Um, but Ninja Warrior wouldn't let me do it in my bare feet. Oh, yeah, of course not. But I didn't. But. I didn't, for me, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm here right now in my bare feet. Like the only time I took. Oh, so you were walking around in your bare feet outside of doing the course. Yeah. I only brought shoes to get through the airport because I didn't know if you'd get through an airport with bare feet. You know, so like, would you wear off, like but... no feet, no shoes, like outside? Like you're yeah. not just talking about indoors. Yeah. If I can get away with it. The only time I really wear shoes is when I work in clinical places where you have to where yeah, hygiene is an issue yeah. and then because of covid I, I wear shoes now because covid was an issue so but generally if i can get away with it. so i had a pair of shoes with me and they made me wear them for the course and so were they the right shoes now because like presumably you don't have like i'd have a million different pairs of shoes for different activities <laughs> i've been buying the same pair of shoes for about 12 years they're like they started off at about 12 pound in sports direct like mm. they're like long steel they're as thin as you can get shoe so they wouldn't have been mm. at least they were runners were they sort of yeah yeah. yeah but that meant that i only had one pair of shoes with me and i landed in water <gasps> oh. and it's like so landed to the airport had to buy a wee pair of uh, flip-flops because they were like your shoes are soaking what are you doing <laughs> like <laughs> So I went to the wee kiosk and bought um, 
Superman versus Batman flip flops. Nice. <laughs> and people were quite content with them walking through an airport, but not shoes in general. Um, so that's my Ninja Warrior story. The only add on is my nieces now. My nieces watched and obviously because they think I'm superhuman, they were like, you'll definitely do it. And then I didn't do it. And then they're like, oh, better luck next time. <laughs> and now every time it appears on the TV, they're like, you're, are you going to do it this time? They call me Uncle Liam. They no way. <laughs> every time they're like, are you going to do it? And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> so what I have been contemplating is because I got better at editing and video and Excuse me. just editing it. And they're taking the, the video, editing it, so I do complete it. Because there's a war wall in Belfast. I just do it, and they'll be like, you did it this time, hooray! That'd be so I think they so think funny. I won, like, every week until I get it. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> and then how long did it take to come on TV after you did it? It was about three months, I think. Uh, you're not allowed to talk about it or... Talk about being on. You're not allowed to take any photos of it or video or yeah, anything. I expected that, all right. But some anonymous person sent me photos and video of my Ninja Warrior. It wasn't me. It was somebody. Yeah. <laughs> anonymously, obviously. just. So I have a picture off the full course that I attempted from. Very cool. I assume whatever I signed is old now. It's like six years or something or four. I can't even remember, but. Sorry, you're saying it was six years ago you did it? I think it might have been about four years ago, but I'm not 100% sure. It might have been less. I can't. Wow. Jeez, I didn't even realize it had been going in the UK for that long. I, I think I was the third season of it. Wow. That's so interesting. Yeah, and do you know anyone since that has done it or have you inspired Yeah, I actually to became friends it? with one of the Ninja Warrior trainers who like test the course. So he, he lives, he's a guy called Paul Kelly, lives up in Belfast. He tra- he would go around the world te- course testing. Wow. So um, one of my mates, Ryan Tracy, he was the fastest balloon modeler in the world. Remember he won Britain's Got Talent and stuff? Sorry, the fastest balloon modeler? In the world, yeah. He's the fastest balloon modeler in the world. Oh, I just wasn't sure what you said. I was like, <laughs> did you just say balloon model? Yeah, okay, he, that's interesting. He went on Britain's Got Talent and beat the world record and got a Guinness world record and got through to the semis and all on it. Um, I helped him train for that and then was like, use that as a way to get on Ninja Warrior. So he started training for Ninja Warrior and then we started to go up to Paul to like try it. But the thing that that I always get is, it was the first time I ever got to try a a warped wall. If I had actually made it to that wall, people always like, you made it to the wall, you've done it. I would have failed. I could not get up. The first time it took me about seven. That's attempts. the really tall one. You have to like leg it up and ca- yeah, there's no way. Yeah. I also think yeah. it's like kind of unfair to really short people because I'm five foot nothing and there's no fucking way I'd be able to do that. Yeah. It's one, physically one impossible. With us was a free runner, a wee parkour kid. And he was on real. He was running up pillars and doing backflips and all mad shit. And he just went through the course like it was nothing. He could not get up that wall. He was about five foot. Just, oh my god and you know in the i think in the u.s one they give them an option of a higher version and if you get up the higher version you like win 10 grand immediately yeah and it's like how some people actually managed to do that <laughs> just tall there was people that were were on our course and they weren't physically fit or anything they were just so long like they stepped across the stones and they just really i think it's things. so much easier if you're tall yeah yeah i'm about what five nine i think so so you're up there, up there with the I'm height. But yeah, you probably height, I suppose. Probably be taller. Yeah, someone like yourself is about five foot, then I'm a giant, yes. Yeah. But I, I would definitely struggle. Like I I watched I watch the US version sometimes and every now and again they'll have a small lady on and I'll just be like, Go on, like I really wanted to do it, but then she never does it. Cause it's just like there's it's always something where you have to swing maybe from one thing to another and it's just like yeah. too short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's loads of that. <laughs> There's loads of the tall guys were just sort of the things now, that were running. So in, in terms of like um, the strength, like, do, do you need to be really strong? Because you there's lots of hanging. There's lots of. Yeah. So you do upper need body, to be really strong. Upper body has you have to be good at pull ups and, and grip work more than anything. Like I met people that were really strong, like they had good shoulder press and stuff, but they just had no because they're used to using um, wrists protectors and things whenever they're in the gym and then trying to hang on to anything like in a claw 
just most people have never even attempted that. Never mind. Yeah, no, I've never in my life. Never your full adrenaline being shouted at by two thousand people go mental. And you're like, yeah, because I think it's something that I like. God, you'd, I'd love to do it, but I just never have the the strength. But it, it, you can you you can have different ty- kinds of strength because you're saying you don't particularly love like running in your tr- yeah. personal training. So there there are things you can. The rock climbers always do well because they yes, just I've noticed that like, they're so good at it, aren't they? Yeah, there was an and ice climber on one season that. that absolutely murdered the course. Yeah, he was. And again, a lot of them are, are not massively tall either. It's just they have that crazy strength that they can get away with. Like a normal person trying to swing from one to the other has got five to ten seconds before they run out of strength. <laughs> yeah. Whereas a rock climber can go till they get a good bit of momentum and then shoot off. So, and in the UK version, did they have that wall where you have to like? hold on to the you hold on to the bit right sorry i'm like can you see me you hold on to the bit like this and then you have to put your foot onto it but then they start falling off and you have to like not, keep the really not hard the year one. i did it the, the oh, year yeah. i did it they had the plastic wall you know that you jumped up yes and you kind of shimmied up is it yeah yeah so they change it every year but also they change because we met a few of the ones that had done the day before so we met them in the same hotel and we were like, so what do we do? What's the crack? And they were all complaining about rope burns. They were all hands were wrecked from rope. So we were all like expecting loads of rope. Yeah. And all the girls who were in the hotel were stopped moisturizing immediately. They were like, no more moisturizing for the rest <laughs> of the day until tomorrow. And there wasn't a rope in sight when we got there. <laughs> so do you, were they changing it they changed day on it. day? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. Which makes sense because everyone's going to do what we did, like ask the people. Yeah, I just never, I never thought of that. I thought that everybody had to do like the exact same thing. Or yeah, I'd never even thought about how they would actually organize it. And come here, was there any parties or anything then once everyone had finished in the hotel or did everyone just feck off home? I finished my run and interview at about five to six and soaking wet was walking through the, the entrance place getting changed oh yeah and straight you... out of the car straight to the yeah yeah sorry you said you, you, you so you you said your shoes were wet at the airport so yeah you obviously didn't it, stay well, i went straight night, so they have a morning and an evening so they booked us the night before you land so i landed about 10 o'clock at night went straight to the hotel and then you have to be there for half eight in the morning and then you're there all day and then about six o'clock the new people are coming in as you're being put out, the new audience and everything. So it was in the big arena in Manchester and the, the, the one that's in the middle of the town. So I, I'm walking through, there's like 2,000 people leaving, 2,000 people arriving, and I'm wandering through getting changed <laughs> in the middle of this place because I'm soaked. God, yeah. I wonder how that uh, series has been hit by COVID, I'd say. I'd say they might Same as everything, season. I imagine. Yeah. I imagine they just stopped because... Yeah, I'd say so. Don't know, actually. And There's so uh, many courses that people have in their back gardens that they could do a home edition. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> we go crack. That's my for them, yes. <laughs> yeah, for that one. <laughs> um, and did you, were you well known around the time, like when it came on? Because I know that when I was on Say Yes to the Dress, I got loads of people being like, oh my God. <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it was amazing. It's fun just when people... It's weird because of the sort of lifestyle I, I lead. A lot of the people that knew me were just like, of course, you would show up and then you want to. Whereas people, I get people at talks when I'm doing talks or gigs or something, they, they stare at me with that half closed stare. Yeah. And I just start now. I just at the start, it was just like, I just say Ninja Warrior and they go, oh, my God. <laughs> but now because I've done so many other random things, I start rhyming things off Ninja Warrior. The fall, love, hate. <gasps> you were the guy. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I knew, I knew you. So I just keep just adding to my list of things. I can just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you were in fun. love, hate, weren't? Is that what you were? Yeah, I did a uh, just some extras work up whenever they filmed up in Belfast for the um jail scene. So we did it in the Gaul, in the Belfast Crumlin Gaul, as they call it. I'm very good. Um. I had, I had, I had a line and then I got myself, I got the line taken off myself by asking the question. Give no, me a no line. Way. 
to speak to the main guy. And then he had to speak to another guy. And I said, that seems weird. It seems like he's finishing the conversation with me, with that guy. Oh, dear. And then they were like, actually, you're right. It does. And then they took the line oh, off me. So, all right. So they weren't annoyed. They were just like, no, you're right. This is- yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your input. <laughs> you're good. So I, I ended up being the guy, the main guy's extra. I was the guy that played pool with him and just followed. I was like, just followed him around this jail. I'm like, where do you want me to stand? I just a quarter of an inch away from there. I'm like, okay, cool. Playing pool with him. And then we had to do a gym workout scene as well. Uh, it was funny because he had never trained before and they had fake weights everywhere, but they had real weights as well. And we had to use the real stuff. And then they, they said to him, oh, I'll just pick up that wee weight there. It'll be fine. And he was like, no, I need a real one to look like it's real. And I remember saying to him, that's, you're going to do this take about 30 times. That's a mistake. <laughs> and he was like, no, I'll be fine. About three takes. And he was like, you're right. This is a nightmare. <laughs> They still aren't kind of the same thing. I'm throwing a medicine ball like I'm in some 80s. But he yeah. <laughs> yeah. And which, if you had to pick, which one was your, like, favourite? Ninja which? Warrior, because it fits more of my lifestyle. Like, it make, it fits. And, like, I did the extras work just because it was handy and I could. And it was, again, another thing that someone said to me, do you think you could get an extras? And I'm like, Yeah sure probably i don't know and then went and did that so um but the ninja warrior was a more fun experience unless you meet like i don't know if you watch love hit but in ireland love hit was massive yeah so if was. i meet a love hit guy that loves love hit and say to them oh yeah i was because i was on the scene where they used the pool cue in a way that it wasn't designed to be used so <laughs> what a really... lovely way to put it <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I thought your that that episode was really good. And I was like, did you notice me in it? And then like, that's fun because they'd be like, <gasps> and I, I did a scene with the girl from X-Files on a show. And when I meet X-Files people like that are super like X-Files things, I'm like, oh, I worked with her for a while. I had a chat with her. They're like, <gasps> same thing. So that's more fun then whenever they love it. So, but personally, I like the Ninja Warrior idea of best just because it fits more with like my whole life the way I live my life and the way I talk to people and tell them what to do so yeah well thank you so much for sharing that was super interesting I'm obviously as you can tell I, I'm a fan of Ninja Warrior myself so <laughs> I really wanted to hear that story and hear how you got onto it do you want to thank remind everyone in no worries do you want to remind everyone where to find you online uh, so just look at the private guy so the private guy is the easiest way to find me and you can reach out to me that way and I'm happy to interact as much as you like cool and i'll put your links down in the description on youtube and in the show notes on all the audio platforms uh so just scroll down and click the links uh thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and thank you so much for watching and listening to the podcast uh please subscribe on youtube or follow us on all any of the your preferred audio platform uh, if you could give us a review as well it would really help us out and i shall see you in the next one bye bye hooray This podcast was brought to you by The Shift. For more like this, check out theshift.ie.